What is up, my people, friends, fellow wisdom seekers, fellow truth seekers, haters, shills, bots, controlled opposition? What is up? Welcome, everybody, to the brave new world order straight out the catacombs of podcasting. I am Brandon Saint One. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining me on this journey. Today's episode, we are going to dive headfirst into the censorship industrial complex. Just last week, Michael Schellenberger from the Twitter Files fame testified once again in front of Congress with some shocking revelations about how the government is colluding with big tech and censoring anybody that they can. It goes against the narrative. So we will listen to a little bit of Michael Schellenberger's testimony, as well as go through a little bit of a document from the judiciary.house.gov website that is from back in March when Michael Schellenberger and Matt Taibbi first testified about the Twitter files. And I want to go through it because it details exactly what the censorship industrial complex is and what their goals are, their ideology, and how they operate instead of just throwing buzzwords around the censorship industrial complex, the military industrial complex is out to get us. This way we know all the ins and outs, all the little intricacies of how the censorship industrial complex operates. I think this is the most important thing. If we don't have freedom of speech to talk about things, then they have us and we have to follow the lead and do whatever they say. There will be no discourse, no dissenting voices if we allow them to do what they want to do. So we will dive into all of that. I just want to thank everybody for coming along with me on this journey, each and every episode, all of you that like, share, subscribe, and anybody out there that's new that's listening to the show. Welcome to the Brave New World Order. If you enjoy this episode, take a second to like, subscribe, and share. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And if you want to help the show out, help the show grow, there are a couple links in the show notes. And also one more thing, I have some news, some pretty good news. I am in the process of putting together a website. It's going to go live soon. It will be www.thebravenewworldorderpodcast.com. It is not quite ready yet, but I will make an announcement as soon as it goes live. And I hope that everybody goes over and checks out the website and gives me feedback as soon as it is up and running. I'm stoked. I hope that you are too. So that's the good news. And I know I said one more thing, but there's just one more thing. All right, everybody, let's swan dive headfirst into the abyss that is the censorship industrial complex. On November 30th, 2023, just last week, Michael Schellenberger, as well as Matt Taibbi and a few others testified once again in front of the House Judiciary Committee. Why don't we just take a listen to what he had to say? Nine months ago, I testified and provided evidence to the subcommittee about the existence of a censorship industrial complex, a network of government agencies, including the Department of Homeland Security, government contractors, and big tech media platforms that conspired to censor ordinary Americans and elected officials alike for holding disfavored views. I regret to inform the subcommittee today that the scope, power, and lawbreaking of the censorship industrial complex are even worse than we had realized back in March. Two days ago, my colleagues and I published the first batch of internal files from the Cyber Threat Intelligence League, which show US and UK military contractors 
working in 2019 and 2020 to both censor and turn sophisticated psychological operations and disinformation tactics developed abroad against the American people. Many insist that all that we identified in the Twitter files, the Facebook files, and the CTI files were legal activities by social media platforms to take down content that violated the terms of service. Facebook, X, formerly Twitter, and other big tech companies are privately owned, people point out, and free to censor content. And government officials are free to point out wrong information, they argue. But the First Amendment prohibits the government from abridging freedom of speech. The Supreme Court has ruled that the government may not induce, encourage, or promote private persons to accomplish what is constitutionally forbidden to accomplish. And there's now a large body of evidence proving that the government did precisely that. What's more, the whistleblower who delivered the CTIL files to us says that its leader, a quote-unquote former British intelligence analyst, was quote-unquote in the room at the Obama White House in 2017 when she received the instructions to create a counter-disinformation project to quote, stop a repeat of 2016. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Cybersecurity, and Information Security Agency, CISA, has been, at the center, been the center of gravity for much of the censorship, with the National Science Foundation financing the development of censorship and disinformation tools and other federal government agencies playing a supportive role. Emails from CISA's NGO and social media partners show that CISA created the Election Integrity Partnership, EIP, in 2020, which involved the Stanford Internet Observatory and other U.S. government contractors. EIP and its successor, the Virality Project, urged Twitter, Facebook, and other platforms to censor social media posts by ordinary citizens and elected officials alike. EIP reported that they had a 75% response rate from the platforms and that 35% of the URLs that they reported were either removed, labeled, um, or throttled, or soft blocked. In 2020, the Department of Homeland Security, CISA, violated the First Amendment and interfered in the election, while in 2021, CISA and the White House violated the First Amendment and undermined America's response to the COVID pandemic by demanding that Facebook and Twitter censor content that Facebook said, that Facebook itself said was quote unquote often true, including about vaccine side effects. All of this is profoundly un-American. One's commitment to free speech means nothing if it does not extend to your political enemies. In his essential new book, Liar in a Crowded Theater, Jeff Kosef, a law professor at the United States Naval Academy, shows that the widespread view that the government can censor false speech and or speech that quote unquote causes harm is mostly wrong. The Supreme Court has allowed very few constraints on speech. For example, the test of incitement to violence remains its immediacy. I encourage Congress to defund and dismantle the government organizations involved in censorship. That includes phasing out all funding for the National Science Foundation's Track F, Trust and Authenticity in Communication Systems, and its Secure and Trustworthy Cyberspace Track. I would also encourage Congress to abolish CISA in DHS. Short of taking those steps, I would encourage significant guardrails and oversight to prevent such censorship from happening again. In particular, it's very easy to see the line in CISA. They say they're covering physical security, cybersecurity, but they added a third one, cognitive security, which is basically attempting to control the information environment and how people think about the world, including the stories that they tell. Finally, I would encourage Congress to consider making Section 230 liability protections contingent upon social media platforms known in the law as interactive computer services to allow adult users to moderate our own legal content through filters that we choose and whose algorithms are transparent to all of us. I would encourage Congress to prohibit government officials from asking the platforms to remove content which the Supreme Court may or may not rule on constitutional next year when it decides on the Missouri v. Biden case. Should the court somehow decide that the government requests for censorship are constitutional, then I would urge Congress to require such requests be reported publicly, instantaneously, so that such censorship demands occur in plain sight. Thank you very much for hearing my testimony. So yeah, as you can hear, this shit is nuts. The crackdown is upon us. It has been upon us. But it's being exposed, which is a good thing but they want to go after your thoughts, thought crimes. They want to control what you say and how you interact with others. This shit's especially important because of 2024 is just upon us. 
an election year, what's going to happen when we can't question election results, we can't question if they decide to pull some shit and lock us in our houses so that they can mail in ballots to everybody en masse and fortify the election again, like they admitted to in Time Magazine, an article that came out February 4th, 2021 by Molly Ball that said the secret history of the shadow campaign that saved the 2020 election. I'll post a link. This came out a long ass time ago, but just like everything else, so much shit happens. Everybody forgets about it, but it's an interesting read, no doubt, but it just shows the power and what they are capable of doing. And they will rub it right in your face afterwards. I mean, I think elections are bullshit anyway, but we need to be able to discuss these things in real time when we're being psyoped as a podcaster that talks a lot of shit. This is an issue I think is number one. Nothing else matters if we can't ask questions. So now that we heard his testimony and I ranted and raved a little bit, let's look at this document. I will post a link like I always do, but it is from back in March. And it is from when Michael Schellenberger testified the first time. And it details what exactly the censorship industrial complex is. So let's read through a little bit of it with first the definition and mission. The censorship industrial complex is a network of ideologically aligned governmental, NGO, and academic institutions that discovered over the last few years the power of censorship to protect their own interests against the volatility and risks of the democratic process. They are not defending democracy, quote unquote, as they claim. Rather, they are defending their own policy and pecuniary interests against democracy. National Science Foundation Funding since January 2021, the National Science Foundation has made at least 64 government grants, totaling $31.8 million on the science of countering social media mis- and disinformation, and two government grants, totaling $7 million. 42 colleges and universities received 64 grants. The NSF created a new research track, Track F, for disinformation and censorship research called the Trust and Authenticity in Communication Systems. NSF justifies its censorship program as a way to defend civilization. Quote, modern life is increasingly dependent on access to communication systems that offer trustworthy and accurate information, unquote, writes NSF in its 2022 research overview. Quote, yet these systems face a common threat. Communication systems can be manipulated or can have unanticipated negative effects. Introducing misinformation into communication flows can disrupt the performance of a wide range of activities and the functioning of civil society. See how they try to scare everybody? They think you are too stupid to figure things out on your own. Here is a little sample of the censorship and disinformation initiatives the NSF 2022 was funding. University of Michigan, WiseDex, Harness the wisdom of crowds and AI techniques to help flag more posts. Hacks and Hackers. Toolkit for building trust around controversial topics such as vaccine efficacy. Ohio State University. CoCast. This helps decision makers manage their information environment. So there's a bunch here. Temple Universities, Communities that uses an AI network science tool to police the spread of mis- and disinformation. The University of Wisconsin 
has a program called Course Correct. So as you can see, this censorship industrial complex runs deep. And the programs that this NSF has been funding are modeled after the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, also known as DARPA. And they are using tools that DARPA and the DOD originally developed to fight terrorists. And they are using these tools to go after American citizens. The four goals of the Course Correct project funded by the NSF is almost word for word when taken from DARPA's documents. Number one is detect misinformation. Number two, continue developing A slash B testing correction strategies against misinformation. Evaluate the effectiveness of evidence based corrections by conducting small randomized control trials. And number four, the most important one, ongoing collaborations with journalists as well as tech developers and software engineers. So they get to decide what the truth is. And then everything else is misinformation or disinformation. So they use AI and plug their version of the truth into it and then send it out to fight against anything that goes against the narratives and their version of the truth. That's fucking nuts. Now let's go through a quick rundown of the key organizations within this censorship industrial complex. The first one being CISA, CISA, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, an agency within the Department of Homeland Security. On January 6, 2017, outgoing Obama administration, DHS Secretary Je Johnson designated election infrastructure as critical infrastructure, opening up CISA's mission to censoring alleged disinformation. Congress created CISA in November 2018 to defend the U.S. from cybersecurity threats from hostile foreign actors, for example, Russian hackers. And then we have Digital Forensics Research, DFR Lab at the Atlantic Council. The lab is one of the most established and influential full-time censorship institutions in the world. Atlantic Council DFR Lab created the Foreign Facing Disinfo Portal in June 2018, working directly with the National Endowment for Democracy, the NED, and 23 organizations to censor election narratives leading up to the 2019 elections in Europe. In 2018, Facebook named Atlantic Council an official partner in countering disinformation worldwide. U.S. taxpayer funding to the Atlantic Council comes from the Defense Department, the U.S. Marines, the U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Navy, the State Department, USAID, the National Endowment for Democracy, as well as energy companies and weapons manufacturers. Yep, they're all in on it, everybody. The next organization is one called Graphica, a private network analysis firm. Graphica published a report for the Senate Intelligence Committee in December 2018, which claimed to have uncovered in unusually rich detail the scope of Russia's interference not only in the 2016 U.S. presidential election, but also in our day-to-day -day democratic dialogue. Grafica hired as its director of investigations Ben Nimmo away from DFR Lab. The Defense Department's Minerva Initiative, which focuses on psychological warfare and DARPA, both gave grants to Grafica. In 2021, the Pentagon awarded nearly $5 million in grants 
and nearly 2 million in contracts to the organization. The next one is Moonshot CVE. It's a private firm to redirect right-wing people online away from radicalism, but was found to have pushed right-wing people toward an anarchist leader. Quote, they sent people who are already looking for violence to a convicted felon with anarchist and anti-Semitic views. Unquote. That was Representative Morgan Griffith, who is a Republican from Virginia. Moonshot includes Elizabeth Newman, former DHS Assistant Secretary for Counterterrorism. The next organization is FITF, the Foreign Influence Task Force, a cyber regulatory agency comprised of members of the FBI, DHS, and ODNI. The next organization involved is the GEC, Global Engagement Center, an analytical division of the United States State Department, which systematically launders domestic censorship by working through counter disinformation, quote unquote, NGOs and foreign firms. The next one is a group called Hamilton 68. It's a dashboard created with the United States government funding and the support of new knowledge claiming to reveal Russian bots on Twitter, but was mocked by Twitter staff because all or almost all belong to American citizens. The next one is the HSIN, Homeland Security Information Network, a portal through which states and other official bodies can send quote unquote flagged accounts. The next one is the EIP, the Election Integrity Project, a partnership between four government funded censorship organizations Stanford Internet Observatory, Graphica, University of Washington Disinformation Lab, and the Atlantic Council's. Digital Forensic Research Lab, EIP, has served as CISA's deputized domestic disinformation flagger. The next one on the list is the IRA, not the IRA that you think. It's the Internet Research Agency. That is the infamous Russian quote-unquote troll farm that was headed by Putin's chef, another quote-unquote, because it was bullshit. All right, the next organization to keep an eye out for is the MISP, the Malware Information Sharing Platform. This is used by cybersecurity operatives to share malware, tools around bots, coordinated and inauthentic ops. Quote, when DFR wanted to apply cybersec tools to misinformation, said a government disinformation specialist. They used MISP, unquote. The next organizations on the list are NewsGuard and the Global Disinformation Index. They are both taxpayer-funded, are urging advertisers to boycott disfavored publications and direct their funding to favored ones. The organizations have been caught spreading disinformation including that the COVID lab leak theory is a debunked conspiracy theory and seeking to discredit publications which accurately reported on Hunter Biden's laptop, such as the New York Post. And if you think what's going on right now with Elon Musk and all the advertisers pulling from X and Twitter, even though I don't trust Elon, it just shows that they are revealing how they operate right out in the open. All right, moving on without going off on a tangent. The next one is the Cognitive Security Collaborative and Adversarial Misinformation and Influence Tactics and Techniques. These are online platforms for describing and coordinating disinformation attacks. Quote, 
it works like other security operations focused on threat actors, unquote, noted the specialist, quote, if they have a threat actor who has launched a coordinated inauthentic information attack, they would log the threat actor and start mapping the actor just as they would a cyber attack. They then coordinate social media takedowns, unquote. Wow, crazy shit. The next one here is the University of Washington, one of two academic institutions that DHS worked directly with and had its partner to censor information on social media platforms during the 2020 election. It received a $3 million government grant shared with Stanford Internet Observatory from the Biden administration in 2021 to continue its election misinformation flagging. Stanford Internet Observatory is the next one on the list. We've heard their name mentioned already. They are one of the four members of the Election Integrity Project and later the Virality Project with the University of Washington, Graphica, and DFR. It was created in June 2019 by director Alex Stamos and research manager Renee DeResta. SIO monitors social media and promotes internet censorship. For the 2020 election, as part of its partnership with SISA, SIO had 50 quote unquote miss information analysts assigned to monitor social media. SIO was originally funded by Craig Newmark Philanthropies, the Oh My Dar Network, and the Charles Koch Foundation. All right, so now that we know some of the organizations involved with all of this, let's take a look at some of their disinformation campaigns. It says many of the leaders and participants in today's censorship industrial complex have been involved in spreading disinformation, including conspiracy theories, while discrediting accurate information and alleging that valid theories were debunked conspiracy theories. Number one, the Trump-Russian collusion conspiracy theory 2016 through 2019. The next one of their campaigns was delegitimizing the COVID lab leak theory in 2020 and 2021. And also number three on the list in 2020 and 2021 was the Hunter Biden laptop conspiracy theory. So those are the big three campaigns from this report earlier this year. And we all know this year has been wild. We've had wars and all different types of stuff popping off. Ukraine funding going there, people speaking up about where's that money going. I'm sure this censorship industrial complex has been going nuts trying to stop people from asking questions. And it's probably doing it right now. And I'm probably going to get shadow banned or flagged or whatever the fuck is going on just for speaking up and talking about this in this episode. And definitely for having the podcast that I have. But hey, I ain't scared. I don't give a fuck. Bring it on. I ain't shutting up. I'm going to keep on looking for some answers and asking questions and reading these reports. They are already attacking free speech under the guise of hate laws and hate speech. Kathy Hochul, the governor of New York, just passed some funding to curb misinformation and disinformation online millions of dollars, like $3 million. She just held like an hour long press conference a couple weeks ago. I expect this to ramp up really crazy. So even though, like I said, I don't really trust Elon Musk very much at all. He wants to put a fucking chip in your brain. Talked about this already many times, but still, 
I still think it's funny he's telling everybody to fuck off when they're putting the heat on him. And X very well may be the only platform to speak about such things. I don't really post on there. I'll fuck around with it that much that I really care. But the flow of information and certain things that people can talk about on there as opposed to what they could talk about on there last year is way different. But also, yeah, lots and lots and lots of bullshit. But we're smart enough to figure that shit out. We, we don't need the fucking government policing our thoughts. We can sift through the information ourselves and feel it what seems to be right, what resonates with us, what seems to be complete bullshit. We can figure that shit out on. We don't need you. We don't need a bunch of liars telling us that everybody else is lying. We'll try to figure out who's lying on our own. Just like when you go out in everyday life and somebody could tell you something and it can be completely bullshit and your bullshit meter will go off and you'll know what are they going to do? Develop an app for your phone. So when you're in those types of interactions, somebody says something that's considered misinformation. Your phone starts buzzing off, going crazy, and puts that person on blast for a public humiliation ritual. Who knows how far they will take it. But yes, everybody, thank you all so much for coming along with me on this journey. As always, it's been a pleasure. I hope that you enjoyed it too. If you did, please take a second to like, to subscribe to follow, to share this with anybody who will listen to you, your friends, your family, the cashier at the supermarket. Tell her or him or they or whoever you're dealing with out there in the world about the brave new world order and tell them about the censorship industrial complex and how it's putting the boot on their neck without them even knowing it. I really appreciate everybody who does. And also reach out, answer the Q&A on Spotify, email me, the Brave New World Order podcast at gmail.com. Follow me on x slash Twitter at Brave NWO podcast. If you want to help out, there are a couple links in the show notes. And one more thing, also keep an eye out. I will be making an announcement very soon for the Brave New World Order orderpodcast.com the brand new website will be coming very soon keep an eye out for that thank you all so much for coming along with me on this journey i will see you soon in the meantime stay positive think for yourself question everything much love everybody peace out